Welcome to The Real Estate Show with Pat Lopez, where we talk everything real estate. Today, my guest is Jason Saperton, VP of Business Development at Queen Oak Mortgage. Jason, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Pat. Okay, great. Um, what I want to talk about is the state of the mortgage industry. What's going on? Uh, where rates are heading? You know, th those kind of things. Because I think a lot of people, you know, that's the most important thing, you know, to them, especially if they're thinking about buying a house. But before we go there, uh, just tell me a little bit of your story. How did you get started in the mortgage business? Uh, absolutely. So a little over 20 years ago, I was uh, working for a company and we were doing uh, off lease and repossessed lease equipment uh, and remarketing those. And I kind of really wanted to get out of that, but stay in the financial field and uh, somebody had offered me the opportunity to become a mortgage broker and kind of from that point forward, I fell in love with the mortgage business. Right. Uh, it's fantastic. You know, you help borrowers and people be able to get into houses and it can certainly be extremely rewarding. Um, uh, along with being a mortgage broker, I also moved on to processing and underwriting. So okay. uh, as far as the origination standpoint, I've basically done everything except close. So right. I've taken applications and helped people get in homes. I've uh, process and I've made the decisions as an underwriter as well. Uh, then at one point I made another career transition within the mortgage business, but moving out of what we refer to as the, the retail mortgage business where people work directly right. with borrowers into uh, the correspondence space. And on that side, that's where I would purchase the loans right. from you know smaller lenders. Uh, and that's a real important piece of the entire mortgage machine, right? right. So if if you have you have a finite amount of money that you can lend out, right? So once you've lent all that out, either you just sit there collecting your payment, or you can sell that loan to somebody who's got more money than you right. and lend it again and again. And I was that person that had more money, and I bought those loans, you know, for obviously very very large companies that I worked for, right? Um, and that was fantastic because that gave me uh, additional kind of insight into the mortgage business where I worked with not only retail folks uh, and the originators, but also the secondary and capital markets people. And I got insight as to how rates are kind of generated, the impact of the economy on rates, how the entire mortgage market really works as far as the sales and how right. complicated it can actually be. Um, and then uh, I enjoyed that. And a couple of years ago, I had an opportunity to come over to Quaint Oak Mortgage, coming back to the retail side uh, here at Quaint Oak Mortgage. Uh, I am the VP of Business Development right. as part of my job. I do wear many, many hats. Essentially, I run the day-to-day -day operations for the operations and sales team here at Quaint Oak Mortgage. Okay. Okay. So uh, a little bit of everything um, here at Quaint Oak. Very good. Okay. Now let's jump right into what's going on in the market. Because every time I go on the internet, I hear about one company laying people off, another company, you know, ceasing operations, other companies just closing up altogether. So w what is happening? Well, there's no doubt about it. The mortgage business in, is, is essentially in a little bit of a contraction at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, a couple of years ago, at the beginning of the pandemic, uh, we saw m mortgage company volume explode. Um, volumes doubled and tripled for many companies. Uh, we had historically low interest rates. Uh, people were buying houses like crazy. Uh, as part of that buying spree, house prices increased. They kept going up and up and up. Um, you know, and we had lots of people that were refinancing because again, we were seeing rates that we had never seen before. Right, ever. A, a long-term 30-year fixed rate for 3%. A 15 year fixed rate for two and a half percent. Right. Um, you know, if you had that for a five year car loan, you'd have jumped all over it, let alone for a house loan. Uh, so we saw lots of people refinancing and buying like crazy. And obviously, volume drastically increased. Uh, last year, when rates took a turn, right. um, which they had to go up at some point, you can't stay down at near zero. Uh, when rates took a turn, the mortgage mortgage space basically cut in half. Um, so you saw people lose half of their volume almost overnight. Uh, and that was for some people. Other other companies, depending on how they were structured, right. lost even more than that. Right. The refinanced houses, that, that's all they did. They lost 90 to 100% of their business. Absolutely. Right. There, there are companies that they focus exclusively on the refinance or primarily on the refinance. Uh, and that's great 
and for when rates go down. And honestly, it lasted a lot longer than you would have expected because rates stayed low for so long. Right. And the pandemic pro it probably helped keep rates lower for longer than they were going to stay low. And that essentially kind of kept those companies in business. Uh, but as soon as rates went up, those companies that focused on purchase business lost 40 to 50% of their business. But those that focused on refinance lost 80 to 100% right. of their business. And those are the kind of companies that you're definitely seeing make massive cuts or just straight up shuttering the doors. Right. So the impact on mortgage companies which is much more dramatic than a realtor because a realtor is on the purchase side. So if business slows down 20, 30% on the purchase side, well, mortgage companies lost 20, 30% on the purchase side, but then maybe have lost 50, 60, 70% on the ref, you know, refi side. So it was more dramatic. So that's why we're seeing all these people, you know, layoffs and, you know, just getting out of the business altogether. Absolutely. Okay. okay that makes sense. Now let's jump into, um, what's going on as far as uh underwriting um is there any changes in you know back in 2007 2008 you know with you know the housing crisis you know underwriting standards became you know tougher you know stricter um do we see any of that you know today uh, so we're seeing a little bit of tightening you know there's always some sort of tightening or adjusting but nowhere near the kind of swing that we saw back in 2007 2008 so when we had that original crash right um, there were massive rule changes that were put into place because you know there were a lot of loans that were done for people who truly couldn't afford it okay. um, you know the stated loans things of that nature so since then uh, in the mortgage and lending space we've had a rule that we've had to adhere to uh, referred to as ATR ability to repay so what that means is across the mortgage lending space no matter what kind of loan you're doing, you've got to make sure that in some way there is capacity to repay that loan. Right. Sometimes can be calculated a little bit differently than your standard. Basically, no matter what, they have to be able to repay that loan in order to get it. So all the loans that we're seeing right now, in essence, and borrowers can can make their payments. Right. Now, the mortgage business is always reevaluated and sometimes things need to be adjusted and changed. Uh, so there is a, uh, a change coming up. Um, Fannie Mae, who is one of the largest buyers of mortgages, of conventional mortgages, they're making a change to their automated engine. They got okay. a great tool that helps evaluate borrowers based on their credit and other information. Uh, the change that's coming is if you have a borrower that has compounded risk factors, right? So you're talking about not just one risk factor, right. but you know, they're very little money being put down. Um, what we refer to as pay shock, meaning their housing payment is going up drastically over their current housing right. payment. They have very little assets. They may not have any reserves after closing, uh, things like that. When you're and you know maybe their debt to income ratio is high. When you combine all of those together, it's going to tighten up a little bit. And maybe a loan that might have barely squeaked through last month before right may not make it through. But uh, while there is a tightening, don't expect to see a massive impact uh, to the borrowers that are no, you know, that are getting qualified now. Right. Yeah, because if you give pay stubs, W twos, tax returns, you're able to afford the house, and your credit is decent to good. Mm -hmm. You know that there's there's not a dramatic where in 2008, all you had to do is, you know, breathe on a mirror, and if you fogged it up, you're approved. You know. And don't forget, back in 2008, one of the big issues that we had was, you know, that was the last bubble, right? And, right. I, you know, I, I refer to this as a bubble only because we've had a massive run up in housing values. But those run up in housing values were essentially fake, right? They were based on people who just breathed on a mirror right. and said they could afford it. Right. The housing value increase now, that's all based on just how cheap money was. Right. You know, again, you go out for a 3% interest rate and many, many people were getting interest rates in the threes and fours. Right. You, you know, your payment is X, what you can afford. Well, the house you can buy, that price goes up at the, you know, the cheaper cost of money. So right. that's what we saw and why the values of price of houses kept going up this time, why this is very different from 2008 when we had that crash. Okay. Now rates, um, we've mentioned rates a couple of times. We saw rates, historic lows in the threes. Now they're in the sixes, maybe seven, depending on credit scores, depending on the program you're doing. Um, 
So where are you seeing rates? What are the, you know, quote unquote, smart people saying, you know, where they think rates are going to go? So what I'm about to say is me taking a lot of information from those smart people. Right. Because they know more than I do, but I read a lot so I can digest that information. So first, let's kind of just talk about a little bit where we were, right? So we had about a decade where we were at a 3% or, or super low interest rate, well below five, right? So the idea is, you know, we kind of, were, rates were like a spring. Right. And they were compressed down and they kept getting pressed down further and further and further. And eventually that spring's going to come up. Right. We had them down so low for so long that what we saw last year in 2022 was that spring just popping right. and expanding, you know, like the snakes coming out of the can. And that's what happened. So uh, in about an eight month period, interest rates doubled. Right. Right. We went from 3% to 6% uh, in, in a six to eight month period. That's super, super fast. Um, just to kind of add a little bit more into perspective, people hear a lot about the Federal Reserve interest rate, the right. Fed rate. That's essentially the cost of money, right? That's the baseline cost of money. Mm -hmm. That's how much it costs to, to borrow funds for banks and those that feed the, uh, the whole economy essentially with cash. So this time last year, and we're recording this in March 2023, right. the Federal Reserve target rate was 0.25%, uh, in essence, free. Right. You're talking free money at a quarter percent at that point. Today, the target rate is 4.75%. So the cost of money has increased exponentially. Right. Well, of course, that's going to feed through to mortgage rates and to any other Everything. borrowing rate, you know, right. because it costs more to, to get that money. So it's going to cost more for you to borrow that money. Uh, and that's what we're seeing. So last year, we saw a massive increase, super, you know, constant increases uh, by the Federal Reserve. I mean, they increased 4.5% in a 12-month period. Right. So um, rates obviously went up. And we are seeing that now. We expect the Fed to raise the rate uh, again this month. Right. And there are maybe some more potential raises. But what we expect to see this year is nowhere near what we saw last year. Uh, we do expect to see rates go up a little bit more. Um, and as we come into the spring buying season, rates may inch up and increase a little bit, but not necessarily to the extent of what we saw Previously. Right. They're not going to double. Absolutely. Right. Uh, and then there is a possibility, depending on, you know, there are many forecasts that have inflation going down, um, jobs getting jobs numbers getting worse. Right. Um, and, and as weird as that sounds, what the Fed's target is based on is worse jobs <laughs> and lower inflation. inflation right. Because if people aren't working, they can't keep spending money and right. driving up the cost of goods, goods. by mm -hmm. having demand. Um, and with that, we do expect to see those rates. There is a, po a good possibility that rates could dip a little bit uh, as we get in later into the year. Right. Obviously, that's based on a lot of economic factors, geopolitical factors. Right. There are things that could happen outside of this country that we have no control over. Correct. That, uh, could impact that. But that's what the expectation is right now. Okay. And then um, always law, supply, and demand. That's always out there. So because... A lot of people are on the sideline. That means people who are selling are on the sideline. So if there's not a bunch of inventory out there, that's going to maintain housing prices. So you're not going to see a big drop in, in, in housing prices. Absolutely. You're right. Because the, the, the demand is higher than, than the supply that's right. out there right now. I mean, if you own a home and you've got a 2.75% interest rate, you know you're going to buy another home. Um, you know, or you have to because you got to live somewhere. Right. It's kind of hard to sell that and make that move. You got to make sure that it's definitely going to be beneficial for you so that it is keeping the prices high. We're not seeing the same run up that we saw in the last two years. Right. But we're not really seeing like a certainly a, a dip. massive dip right. uh, in housing prices. Yeah, because a lot of people are just on the sidelines. They're just mm -hmm. waiting and, and right. seeing. And, and we've got people that are on the sidelines for a couple of reasons. You've got people that are on the sidelines just because it's expensive. And then you got other people that are on the sidelines because they did get that sticker shock. Right. Right. I mean, it's it's hard. If you walk into a grocery store and your gallon of milk is now $35. Right. Oh, I'm not buying milk. Doesn't matter that everybody really wants milk. I'm going to hold off on right. getting that milk. You know, then when it comes down to $25, maybe you'll you'll buy it, even though you're still way overpaying what you were expecting, what you're used to. And that's kind of what happened with these folks with rates. Some people were qualified at a three and a half percent interest rate. And six months later, they finally found a house because it's not easy to buy a home. Right. And the, their payment went up 45%. Right. 
So if you looked at a $2,000 a month payment and now it's $3,000, you're like, oh my God, I finally found a house, but now I can't afford it or I don't, I don't feel comfortable doing it. And exactly. Even the people that could afford it, they didn't feel comfortable and they sat to the side. And, and we actually saw those people come off the sidelines in February of 23. Um, as we did have a little bit of dip in rates, right. uh, we're below the seven mark. There seems to be a good comfort level when rates are at, you know, when you can quote a rate that starts at five or six as opposed to seven and people are, have been getting off and we did see uh, an increase in applications at right. that time. Okay. Very good. Um, well, do you have anything else that I didn't ask that, uh, you would like to talk about real quick or? Uh, I, I think we, we kind of covered it all well. I gladly sit here and talk about finances all day, all day long, <laughs> um, finances and movies and, and you can get me running all day, but I think that's enough for now. For okay. Me. Perfect. Well, thanks for being on the show. Thank you. And that's the real estate show with Pat Lopez. Be sure to follow the show on Facebook and Instagram and subscribe below. Super important. I have some dynamite guests lined up and some really good topics. Also leave your comment below on some show topics you'd like me to cover in the future. Remember this show is everything real estate. Um, so we hope you enjoyed the show and have a great day.